Calculating transformation efficiency is relatively simple, but it also involves math, so sometimes it can be a little bit difficult. The key really here is understanding what it is that you've done, and uh, once you can figure that out, then the numbers become much easier. So I always say use the numbers to describe the process. It does involve a formula, it looks something like this, and this is where people start going, Ugh, because uh, what is all this, right? And this is sort of like the end. And once you understand how, I mean, what we've done, then it becomes hopefully a little bit simpler, right? And so let's kind of walk through transformation first. You know, at this stage, you've done a transformation. So hopefully some of the things we talk about will make sense. If not, then it's a good idea to review transformation. So here's a final look at uh, our transformation. We have these two transformations, uh, one using our GFP plasmid, one using our RFP plasmid. Um, hopefully this makes sense to you. And uh, I just wanted to show you this under UV light and look at it glow, right? The GFP especially is nice and super green. The RFP is like a duller red, right? But it is glowing and so you can certainly see this. And so what we've done is we've taken some plasmid and then we've added to our cells, uh, to the right kind of cells that will now make the protein. I think way back, if you remember, uh, initially we got it from cells that don't make the protein. Anyways, the details are right over here. You can see that we plated, or sorry, we added 0 0.1 nanograms of DNA to our cells. And on the plates here, we've plated 100 microliters. And you'll see that, uh, if you recall, we plated uh, both 100 microliters and then 400 microliters, I believe, unless we made some changes to your transformations. Uh, we're going to calculate, uh, oh, this is what it looks like without the UV light. Uh, but we are going to calculate the transformation efficiency uh, of this particular transformation using our RFP plasmid, 100, uh, 0.1 nanograms, 100 microliters. Uh, and we start off by simply counting the number of cells here, or sorry, colonies, right? Uh, and so each colony um, can also be called a transformant, right? And technically, uh, each colony uh, is an individual clone. So we add this, uh, this DNA, our plasmid, to the, um, the cells. They'll take up the DNA, and then if they've taken up the DNA, they are able to grow in the presence of ampicillin, uh, and then they are called a transformant. Um, because we only add the one plasmid, and because only those that take up the plasmid should be able to grow, theoretically they're all the same, but because, uh, you know, we always say life finds a way, they're not necessarily the same. So we call them transformants. Uh, sometimes we'll call them clones because they are copies of the same thing. Right? And then sometimes we use the word CFU for colony forming unit. All of these sort of mean the same. It's just sort of the context that we want to see it in. So uh, you'll kind of understand uh, um, which term to use when you're talking about specific situations. Okay, But let's start with um, this. We have 140 transformants. So let's talk about just very quickly what we did. Right? We had our initial shot of uh, what we call our competent cells. Remember, these are the cells that are capable of taking up DNA. And we had uh, 100 microliters of that in the tube, right? We added our DNA, in this case is 0.1 nanograms. And then let's do the, while, uh, you know, maybe a good idea to pause, uh, how many micrograms is this? Because uh, ultimately our transformation efficiency is going to be expressed in uh, CFU or transformants or clones per microgram of DNA. So we'd like that in micrograms. So you can do that advanced calculation right now. Okay, so pause and then write that in there. Anyways, so we did our, uh, added our DNA and then we heat shocked, right? And the heat shock uh, allows the DNA or forces the DNA to go into the cells. And then we added our, um, our SOC, our high nutrient medium. And specifically, we added 400 microliters of that, right? And so if you look at the volumes, we can see that if I take 100 microliters of cells and I add 400 microliters, that means in our transformation afterwards, we have a total of 500 microliters of liquid. That includes uh, cells and SOC medium. And all of this stuff will be relevant. We did the thing where we let it do that outgrowth for an hour, and then ultimately we plated 100 microliters and what we call a resuspend, right? But if you do the math, 
100 minus the 500 total will end up actually being 400 microliters. So we had two plates and then we did the spread plate and then we got our data, right? And so that's what it looked like. Good so far? Okay, so let's go back to our, uh, our formula here, right? So let's talk about um, how we calculate this. So we have a number of transformants and so that's 140 transformants, right? And it's, I'm just going to write CFU because it's shorter than transformants and clones, but they're all sort of the same thing. CFU stands for colony forming unit, which I just mentioned, right? Um, so basically anything that forms a colony is a colony forming unit. Specifically, there'd be our transformants or clones of this transformation. And then if you did the math, the conversion, 0 0.000001, micrograms of DNA and then you can do the math for that it'll be a big number uh, did I write uh, let's see Oops. and I believe if I wrote that type that incorrectly that should be 1.4 times 10 to the 6 CFU per microgram of DNA right and so that's what's on the plate now um, that represents the number of uh, transformants on the plate from our uh, the amount of DNA that we put, except for the fact we didn't put all of our cells on there. We only put some of our cells on there. We diluted the total amount of transformants. And remember, our transformants came from that whole 500 microliter mess, right? And so we actually need to count, figure in our dilution. So this is where this comes from. And so now let's rewrite 1.4 times 10 to the 6 CFU per microgram of DNA. And then we multiply final volume at recovery, right? So our final volume is all that stuff in that transformation tube. That was 500 microliters. Notice, by the way, um, the units they present here are milliliters, right? But you don't have to change it to milliliters, and I'll show you why in a second. Anyway, so the final volume at recovery Right, that's that was in our transformation tube was 500 microliters, and in this case we plated 100 microliters. Right, so right there, 100 microliters. So our final volume plated is 100 microliters, and then the reason I don't have to convert is because our here our units are the same; they'll simply cancel out. Um, so as long as the units are the same, that's fine. So if you plated milliliters or uh, nanoliters or liters it doesn't really matter as long as the units are the same then you can simply cancel them out not a big deal uh, if you let's say plated or had a recovery volume of two milliliters but then you plated 300 microliters then at that point then you would need to convert into milli to micro or micro to milli whatever as long as it's the same right and then you do the math there Ding. 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 Oops, that's people texting. And then you should get 7 times 10 to the 6 transformants. Sorry about that. Per microgram of DNA. And uh, that number may mean nothing to you, right? But generally, for cloning aspects, a uh, transformation efficiency of 1 times 10 to the 6 is minimal so we would like greater than 1 times 10 to the 6 so whoever made these cells and i don't remember who made these cells uh, they were made a few years ago um, they made good cells these are more than sufficient for the type of cloning that we're going to do and that's it